Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why, for most lifters, doing a four-day upper-lower is going to be a better choice than a six-day-a-week upper-lower. And this is one of the things that comes up a lot, and I think people get really hung up in the concepts that we give to novice lifters uh, for doing full body three days a week and about muscle protein synthesis uptime. But I think something that people tend to forget with all of this is that the reason we go to split routines uh, to begin with is because at a certain threshold, we start to need higher intra-session training volume. In other words, there starts to reach a threshold to where even if you work really hard, if total volume is too low for a muscle inside of a, a single training session or a single day, you may not, again, the more advanced you get, that you may not actually reach enough total training volume to see muscle growth from that session. Okay, and that's one of the reasons we go away from the full body three days a week. And a lot of times people will look at the upper lower thing and say, okay, well, I mean, I could do six days a week upper lower. But here's what you find, and I'm going to speak from experience as someone who was doing seven day a week upper lower while maxing out every day for a phase and eventually did start overreaching. I set some phenomenal PRs, right? I got to a 552 back squat, 615 deadlift. Hit some pretty good numbers while doing it, but at a certain threshold, the training loads involved become very very difficult to handle and people have to remember i have a perfect lifestyle i was basically in a very small calorie surplus the entire time okay i work from home low stress lifestyle sleeping nine to ten hours every single night eating 4500 calories and 300 grams of protein every day while maintaining very low stress removing all stress from my life that was possible okay that's what it took for me to do that and here's a question I would ask a lot of you. Are you prepared to do that? Right? Are you willing to cut out everything in your life that stresses you? Like if you have a job that you find stressful, or are you in a situation where you can quit that job? If you're in school and you find the tests and stuff stressful, are you in a situation to drop out of school? Right? Can, can you survive and pay your bills in that environment like if you if you have do you have the ability to drop stress from your life immediately um, can you be willing to cut out family members and friends who annoy you or stress you out completely and block them out of your life and not allow them into your home cut all electronic communication with them like do you have the ability to do that and can you sleep nine to ten hours a night those are the questions I would ask for people who are considering a, a true six-day upper lower. If the answer is no to all of the above, like if, if it isn't yes to every single one of those down that checklist, uh, you may want to stick with four-day upper lower. Now, I am then largely in a situation where I am able to do those things. And here's what I find. I recover better on a four-day upper lower. I recover better. Furthermore, in my case, I'm able to get more intra-session volume in. Because here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. We start to find that the more advanced we get, the more we benefit from needing to break not just a weekly volume threshold, but a single session volume threshold. All right? In order to disrupt homeostasis to keep making gains. And if at a certain point... You can get even only a two time a week frequency instead of a three with a superior training stimulus. You're probably going to be better off for it once you're out of your early novice phase. And what I want people to grasp there is that if you get two training sessions that are capable of creating an adaptation every single week. Okay, if you're able to get two every single week and you're able to recover from them. You're going to get better growth than you are off of three sessions a week, which may be questionable in their ability to disrupt homeostasis. Now, let's set aside some of the hypothetical and let's look at the practical. People say, well, that sounds good in theory, but what about in practice? How many elite athletes do you know who do a six day a week up or lower? Not many. Can you think of any? If you do, they're going to be rare. 
how many NFL players with multi-million dollar contracts, how many world record holding power lifters, MMA fighters, people like that do a four day upper lower successfully? A whole lot of them. Notice most really good strength and conditioning coaches tend to lean in the direction of four day upper lower. Why do you think that is? Because it's generally been found to strike a really good balance between intra-session volume and recovery. In other words, we can toy with this idea all day long of, well, you know, if a muscle only grows like 28 to 48 hours after you train, we need to be hitting everything three times a week to get optimal growth. Well, that sounds good in theory. Can you train hard enough to hit optimal growth in each muscle three times a week? Okay, there's a difference between hypothetical and can you actually do it? Meaning, are you able to put in enough work in three lower body sessions every week to actually stimulate enough maximum muscle protein synthesis? Can you even get to a 48 hour? Because we can talk about, well, if I train hard enough, the muscle will get 48 hours of, of growth time. Well, how hard do you think you have to train to get 48 hours of growth time? I'll tell you right now, you're going to struggle to hit that much training load if you're doing it three times every week, particularly for lower body and upper body to some extent too, because you're hitting the same, you're hitting all your back and your pecs and everything. Um, talk about 48 hour growth window, you're going to have to be near maximum recoverable volume to pull that off. Okay. Now we can get away with maximum recoverable volume a couple times a week for the upper body, a couple times for the legs. Yes, we're going to have some days of the week where we're not growing. But here's the thing. If you spread the training volume out, you're also reducing the intra-session volume and the quality of the workout. Because you're not going to be able to do as much work. You're not going to recover. So this idea that you think that by doing three days a week instead of two, that you're going to get 48 hours of growth in that muscle three times per week, you better go back to that other point I made about can you build your life around that? Because the sort of volumes that you see guys who are at very serious levels pushing in their two-day lower body workouts, in order to get 48 hours of growth to benefit from a third session so that you have that whatever growth time you think you're going to have, you're going to have to train that hard three times a week. Are you up for doing a max squat or deadlift and then 15 sets of supplemental work behind it? 20 sets of big movements to failure afterwards? Three times a week? I doubt it. I very seriously doubt it. So we kind of come over to the problem there. We can talk about hypothetically you could get, you know, grow six days a week from training that way, but are you going to be able to train that way for each muscle group three times every week, even on that sort of rotation? I'm going to say probably not. In fact, if you're training near maximum recoverable volume, you're going to need days off from hard training every week. Hey, if you're training hard four days a week, and I mean really hard, I train pretty hard. You think you can do that six times? No, you're going to need some days off. I mean, you can do restoration work. I do restoration, right? I do ab work, grip work, reverse hypers with lighter weight. You know, I take 150 pounds off from my normal work sets. Right, I do some restoration stuff on my off days. You're not going to be able to train hard six days a week. If you think you're training hard and you're not blasting a gram of test and sleeping 10 hours a night on your six day a week, and you think you can keep it up long term, I don't think that you're training that hard. Maybe you need to drop it down and do it correctly for like most elite athletes do and just train really hard those four days. You're going to be better off for it. It's time proven. It's proven for a reason because it works. And we kind of come over to this point of why everyone thinks that they need to deviate from the stuff that we know works. If we know something works and creates elite athletes in multiple endeavors and it's time proven and it works for guys both on gear and clean guys 
and most of the best strength and conditioning coaches tend to program and prescribe it that way, like what benefit do you think you're going to get from deviating from it? Like, like what is it you think that you're going to accomplish? Do you think that you're some special snowflake? Because I promise you, you aren't. You need to do what works. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.